Hello, my name is Russell Preston Brown from Adobe Systems, and these are some of my favorite new features found in Adobe Photoshop CC. Let's start with this great new feature found in the filter menu. It's called Camera Raw Filter. Camera Raw Filter will allow you to target any layer within a document and control that layer with many of the great features found in Adobe Camera Raw. Check this out. I've targeted a layer here to the right, and this layer has a layer mask. This is really unique and new. So I can target a layer with a layer mask. Going to the filter menu, I'm going to convert this layer for smart filters right here. To maintain the non-destructive nature of this new feature, then go back to the filter menu and select camera raw filter. It will then open up this layer with the layer mask applied and allow me to make adjustments. The one particular adjustment I want to show is right here, and it's the new spot removal feature. Selecting spot removal, then going down here and selecting visualize spots, it will then go right into the image and clearly visualize the areas that have spots in them. I can adjust the slider and tell exactly the point where I can clearly see these. Adjusting my brush size down, I can then, of course, go in and simply click on those spots to remove them. Really great new feature. It's that easy. Then click OK. It then applies that, and of course, it's non-destructive, as you can see here, because I've prepared this for my smart filters. Of course, there's more, though. In this second image you see here, I've created a panorama from three different images, as you can see here. Now, when you're done with a panorama, you want to be able to select all of those, group them back together, of course, as a smart object, and then, once again, make adjustments with the camera raw features. Again, using this same feature, I can then go in and make adjustments. Let's check out a great new feature found in camera raw called radial filter. In this case, I'm selecting radial filter, clicking within the image, and I can create a vignette within my image. I can control this vignette by adjusting the outside of that vignette or the inside. I want to adjust the outside and make it slightly darker with my exposure setting you can see here. Now, of course, you can vignette an image within Adobe Camera Raw, but in this case, this new feature allows you to readjust its position to any location within your image, and on top of that, you can add multiple radial filters across your image. I'm going to click OK and finish that project. So there you've seen one of my favorite new features here inside of Adobe Photoshop CC combined with some of the great new features found in Adobe Camera Raw. This next new feature found in Photoshop CC is something that I've always wanted. And it's all about working with HDR images and high bit depth images. As you can see here in Adobe Bridge, I'm selecting three different exposures. I'll go up to my Tools menu and down to Photoshop and over to Merge to HDR Pro. Now, this all seems normal, but it's not until we get to the Merge to HDR Pro dialog, as you can see here, that you'll see this great new feature. Right up here, I'm going to select under the Mode setting to shift this to 32-bit. Watch carefully. When I do this, a new button appears down in the right-hand corner called Tone in ACR. This is fantastic. So by clicking this button, I can automatically go right into the Adobe Camera Raw controls for adjusting this image. Let's go ahead and open up the shadow detail here with the shadow slider. Maybe adjust the clarity slightly like this. But there's one really important thing I want to demonstrate, and it's right under my lens corrections, right here. It's a great new feature called Upright. With Upright, I can adjust the balance of perspective across my image, in this case by selecting the letter A for the Auto feature, or by going through and selecting any of these other three detailed features which will allow me to level the horizon or the verticals, or to balance all of them together. I'm going to select the letter A because it gives me my best results. I'm going to click OK. 
Because this, of course, is a smart object, I can turn these non-destructive features on and off as you see here. There's one other thing I want to demonstrate. Right over here with this second image. This particular image is a 32-bit image. What I want to do is convert this to an 8-bit image. Here inside of Photoshop CC, you can see here under the preferences found here under file handling that you can now use Adobe Camera Raw to convert documents from 32-bit to 16 and 8-bit images. Check this out. If I now go up to the image menu, down to mode, and convert this to an 8-bit image, just like this, it will then automatically take this image right into Adobe Camera Raw. Of course, I can make all of my adjustments here within Adobe Camera Raw, but there's one thing I definitely want to demonstrate, and that has to do with the spot removal tool. I'm going to zoom in on this area right over here. I want to get rid of these power lines here in this image. I'm going to reduce the size of my brush down and show you a great capability. In the past, you could only make a circular correction as you see here. But you can now go in and make an irregular shaped correction by simply painting and adjusting the shape of your correction as you see here. But what's more is that I can click once here on my image, hold down my shift key and click again and it will draw a straight line between those two points, allowing me to make simple corrections like getting rid of these power lines very quick and easy task. And I'm all done. I now click OK, and I now have updated my image. So you've seen two great new ways to work with HDR images here inside of Photoshop CC, as well as converting existing 32-bit images into 8-bit or 16-bit. Here's another great new feature found in Photoshop CC. And this feature is for both the professional and the amateur. And since I'm a qualified professional amateur, it's really, really great for me. In this first image, I'm going to remove some of the blur caused by my moving cell phone camera. This blur is also known as camera shake. In the second project, I'm going to get rid of a little bit of the camera shake from this professional photograph I took in Monument Valley, but I didn't use a tripod. Let's give this first cell phone image a try. Targeting this image that, of course, is a smart object, I can then go up here to my filter menu and over to this new feature called Shake Reduction. Now, Shake Reduction, of course, is designed to get rid of shake within your images, but it will not take an out-of-focus image and bring it into sharp focus. It's strictly designed for camera shake. I'm going to select it and it will automatically analyze this image and then process the image. I love the automatic capabilities. It always seems to target in on the exact position within the image to give me my best results. Look at that. It's sharpened up the image and gotten rid of the camera shake. And over here to the right, if I click right here, you can see it's estimating the amount of camera shake and movement as you can see here in this preview. I can also go in and select the letter Q here on my keyboard and zoom in on a particular area within the image and see before and then after. Wow! Amazing results here from a camera phone image. I'm going to click OK to process this image. And of course, since this is a smart object, it's non-destructive, and because it has a mask related to it, I can go in, of course, with my brush tool and correct any artifacting that might appear with this process. Next, let's take a look at my professional photograph that I took with my SLR camera. In this particular case, if I zoom in, you can see that because I wasn't using a tripod, it's slightly soft because I didn't have that tripod. Now, once again, up to my filter menu and down here to sharpen, let's try the shake reduction on this high quality photograph taken with my SLR. Once again, it targets in on the appropriate location. We can select the Q key from our keyboard, zoom in, and we can see before and then after. It gives it a really nice sharp quality. Of course, I can go in and make adjustments to this, but I really love the automatic capabilities. Clicking OK, 
to process my image. So there you've just seen a great new feature found here in Photoshop CC that allows you to get rid of camera shake. In this next of my favorite new features inside of Photoshop CC, I'm pleased to announce that 3D is now built directly into Photoshop CC and there's no longer a separate extended version. Everybody gets to work with 3D now. And I'd also like to demonstrate the great new and improved painting engine. If I bring up a second image as you see here, then select my clone stamp tool, I can go in, target this image, bring it over to my 3D object, and with this new painting engine, I now have the ability to paint much, much faster and smoother over my 3D surfaces. Check this out. I can paint in these eyes just like this. I can adjust the opacity of my brush simply and easily and start to blend the two images together as you see here. When I'm all done, of course, selecting my tools, I can go into any of the surfaces of my 3D object and immediately pick up that surface and start to rotate it as you see here or selecting the base in this case to lift my image up and check out the shadow. I can of course cast a shadow from any of my objects here inside of Adobe Photoshop CC with these great new 3D features that now everybody gets with a membership to the Adobe Creative Cloud. The final set of features from all of my favorite new features in Photoshop CC has to be the Adobe Exchange panel as you see here. You can access the panel from the window menu down to extensions and over to Adobe Exchange. Adobe Exchange is a valuable resource of paid and free utilities that you can install into Adobe Photoshop. The one I want to point out is something called Adobe Paper Texture Pro right here. With Paper Texture Pro, I can add textures quickly and easily. All I have to do is click on the texture and it's applied to my image. But the greatest thing has to be down here at the bottom where you can randomize your selections by selecting the randomizer button. It will randomly go through all of the available textures here in the window. You can also, from the flyout menu, access different libraries of textures. And in fact, you can load your own textures. But to finish this all off, let's demonstrate how you can share your finished results from Photoshop with your account on Behance. Now, inside of Photoshop CC from the File menu, you can go down to Share on Behance right here. So when you're done with the project, just simply select this. It will then prepare the image for you and display it here. Let's go ahead and tag this with a Photoshop tag and put in a comment like, This is cool. Then select Continue. I can choose a special icon for display as you see here, crop and publish. So now it will immediately go directly into my Behance account so I can share it with my friends and clients. There you have it. Those are my favorite new features found in Adobe Photoshop CC. Give them a try.